about 14 years ago, when I first got introduced to the sport by one of my athlete colleagues, I actually laughed at him and said like, yeah, just do that, do your thing. I was focusing in a complete different direction and to me, more was better and more was always more. I actually wished that I knew back then what I knew now because it wouldn't just changed my entire journey, but it would have prevented a lot of the obstacles and injuries that occurred throughout this way. We can say every injury can be explained by this graph. Today, I want to uncover how injuries and low power output is caused and why it happens. It also, for me as a coach, can help communicate to my clients how to prevent injuries and improve overall well-being. This dotted line is our level of capacity. It basically means how much our body or my body can handle. Below, there's no problem and most likely no pain. If we go above, there most likely will be a problem. But a problem doesn't automatically mean that there's pain. For example, if I ride a bike and I get hit by a car, it definitely exceeds our capacity. It will cause a lot of problems and most likely a lot of pain, and hopefully we do not die. This is how severe this capacity level can be. Now we have three boxes. Those three boxes are called pre-existing loads. It basically are the things that happen to us. It's stuff that piles up and leads us towards our capacity. The first box is anatomical dysfunctions. It's something that we have since birth. Um, it can be an illness, it can be a break in our bones, an injury. The second one is sleep, diet, and stress. It's one of the most overlooked boxes that we have, basically. It means the chance to come back from all the craziness that we cause ourselves to go through every day and every week. It sometimes is favorable, and a lot of times, let's be honest, it's unfavorable. This box basically means it builds or breaks us. The third box is functional assessment. It's not a medical assessment. It is something that we as coaches and trainers use to determine how well somebody can move and how much we can take and handle. What we can do and how well we can do that. Those three boxes are what we start our days with. Something that we need to know is those loads are adjustable. For example, anatomical dysfunctions. If you take a college athlete who was playing for years and years, might have a longer list of injuries or dysfunctions, therefore having a bigger box. If we have somebody who frequently sits at home on the couch watching Netflix, might have a smaller list of injuries, maybe other issues, but most likely a, a smaller box. For our box of sleep, diet, and stress, if we have someone who sleeps eight plus hours every night, 
has a routine of mindful meditations, tracking macros, and basically is doing everything to have a really balanced life, will definitely have a smaller box. Somebody who sleeps three hours because they have an infant at home and they need coffee to actually make it through the day and they dread going to work, well, the box is definitely bigger. For the assessment part, if we have an athlete who really moves well and everything looks beautifully, the box is smaller. And if we have somebody who is not moving well or is having trouble getting into positions, the muscle and the body has to work extra, therefore causing to have more load on the body and therefore a bigger box. And this is how, how our day starts, before we did anything. Now we have a little bit more boxes. The first thing that we have is house or housework. We need to clean, we need to tidy up, we've got stuff to do. And we have errands, just little things, but it piles up. Then we go to work, and everybody knows how tough an eight or nine hour workday can be on our bodies, especially on our mind. And we want to work out. I just named a couple of really, actually, cool movements. But they cause us to go above our capacity, because the boxes below just pile up. The top boxes, we can call them needs and wants. Those are things that make us go through life, the pleasure stuff. It's also something that we do not want to trade just in order to get out of pain or problem-causing positions. Yet, we need to rebalance this equation. We cannot erase injuries, obviously, because they're there. We can improve the sleep, the diet, and the stress. And we can improve the capability of moving. And here's how we do it. We call them BLGs, Basic Lifestyle Guidelines. Those are seven routines that we try to abide by and live by to make our day easier and to make our pre-existing loads be more sustainable. The first one, or the first thing, is we need to accept that the day only has 24 hours. Therefore, trying to find a balance between work and life. The second one is, our Earth rotates. Therefore, energy patterns correlate with the Moon and the Sun. During the Sun, we have more energy. During the Moon, we should rest and recover. The third one is, we will die. We need to accept that. Therefore, start enjoy living your lives. Fourth is water, moving blood, and digestion are essential daily routines. We should not ignore them, but try to own them. Moving or increasing blood flow will help facilitate recovery and healing faster. Moving does not mean working out or exceeding the capacity again. Moving means moving. And one of the things that comes back to the energy patterns with the sun and the moon is we should wake up and go to bed at around the same time every day, even on weekends. This will help our circadian rhythm to be in a better flow state. And the last thing, and something that we actually overlook as well, is digestion is an investment. So eating food is important, obviously, but focusing on how we do that is important as well. Take your time and actually enjoy your food. If we abide by those basic lifestyle guidelines, we are capable of actually starting with much smaller boxes on the bottom 
and therefore having more and more room for our needs and wants, staying below our capacity, maybe even increasing our capacity, therefore taking on more load, enjoying our lives, avoiding injuries, low power outputs, and increasing our overall health and well-being. Thank you.